virtuoso Jeremy Dank has arrived. The MacArthur Foundation awarded him one of its genius fellowships. Musical America named him its Instrumentalist of the Year for 2014. And Out, a magazine covering gay and lesbian perspectives on culture, politics, and more, features Dank in its annual list of achievers. Previews editor John Mark Raffis speaks with the New York City musician about his Penn State debut concert. Dank talks about Fantasy, a work by jazz composer Brad Maldow that has its world premiere at University Park. Dank also discusses his career and the recognition he's been receiving. I have been fortunate enough to, uh, to get to interview a number of people I would describe as geniuses, but I believe that you're only the second MacArthur grant uh, recipient that I've talked to after Regina Carter, who is also a wonderful musician. All right. Um, cool. So is that the sort of thing that you um, get some advance word about? Like, do you, you know, are you told you're on the uh, semifinalist list, or is that literally come no, out of the blue? comes completely out of the blue. I was at the gym when they called, so I was a little um, covered in sweat and kind of uh, not really able to process it very well. And even when I went home to call them back, um, you know, it was a little bit like, well, how is this going to affect my life? And and um, and a lot of disbelief. Um, but also, you know, you know, as as a, as the week went on after I found out, it was so nice to think that all the sort of different kinds of work I'd been doing all these years had, um, in a way, really paid off and been recognized. In addition, I'm sure to being flattered, um, another nice thing about that program is that you get um, a fellowship for more than half a million dollars over the course of five years, and you get to do whatever you want with it. Have you given any thought to um, how you're going to spend the money? I think a lot of it is probably going to have to do with expanding on the things that I've already done, you know, in terms of communicating about music, and um, probably some commissioning is going to be involved. It's probably just going to give me space to do some of the writing and, and um, recording projects that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And maybe some other idea will come to me, and I, you know, and it will, it will be the one. I don't know yet. You're going to be making your Penn State recital debut on January 29th at Schwab Auditorium. Um, I know that you're going to be performing uh, a piece that was commissioned by the Music Accord. Penn State is, is one of the partners in that organization, right. and it's a, um, a, a Brad Meldow piece called Fantasy. Um, is there anything you can tell me about it, like the length of the piece and, and maybe the character of the piece? It's about 12 minutes, as far as I can tell. And uh, unless I change my mind about the tempo at some point. Uh, uh, and it's ruminative and free-formed. And uh, Brad told me he had sort of based it on a, he was sort of under the spell of the development section of the first moment of the Brahms D minor violin sonata, which is a, a, indeed a great, Development section, it's a place where Brahms sort of lands on a pedal point and begins to kind of um, sketch out a kind of brooding, totally unprecedented texture over it. So um, it's a moment filled with kind of anticipation and a little bit dark and kind of uh, wondering. And I think that's that's fairly close to what this piece is. Interesting. Brad Meldow is, is best known, of course, as a jazz pianist. Um, any idea yet what else you're going to be performing on the Penn State program? There's going to be some uh, rags that go along with the sort of jazzy um, orientation of Brad Meldow, and almost certainly a Mozart sonata, and um, and it's possible a few kind of of my sort of special um, how do I put this weird treats, uh, but music that I'm fascinated by uh, by William Byrd and Tom Mancaro and probably finish with a big piece of Schumann. Well, that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. your, most, your most recent recording, of course, is um, of Box Goldberg Variations. Um, yeah. And uh, you've certainly been getting lots of wonderful reviews for that. It's, it's both a, a CD and a DVD combo. You, you actually have a, a DVD with liner notes. Um, I'm, I know that you have a particular affinity for the work of Bach, but that's a piece that... Um, certainly, I would think everybody who records the variations is um, somewhat in the shadow of Glenn Gould's recordings. Did that uh, cross your mind when you were deciding to to record it, or or did that not really enter into the picture? 
Um, you know, luckily, uh, you know, I, I obviously knew Glenn Gould's recording from a very young age, and they you know, were very influential, obviously. But then uh, I sort of haven't listened to them again very recently at all. So whatever they are in my mind is probably very different from, you know, what they are in actuality. Uh, I have a, I have a slight tendency to, um, you know, not listen to anybody else's performances for a little while before I record so that I can kind of clear my head of precedent. I heard um, in an interview that you did with NPR, you compared the Goldberg variations um, in some ways to jazz. You know, all the variations are based on the harmonies. They're not based on the tune of the tune, if you know what I mean. Right. But it's based on a sequence of chords, which is exactly how, um, you know, that's exactly the principle on which jazz works, you know, which you know, sort of a badge of honor not to be able to hear the actual tune, the standard on which the improv is based, but you do all these incredible riffs and variations on, on the on the harmonic, what we call in the classrooms the ground, or the, you know, the ground bass. Um, so that's exactly in a way what Bach is doing, hiding his tune and hiding and, and, and uh, you know, probably the most incredible series of variations on a sequence of harmonies in, in history. You're obviously a man of, of many talents on both sides of your brain are clearly working. I was uh, intrigued to see that when you got your undergraduate degree, you were a double major in not only piano performance, but chemistry. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I, are you still fascinated by chemistry, or do you sometimes wonder why you uh, why you got a degree in chemistry? Well, I'm extremely uninterested in chemistry at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been since more or less uh, my junior year. Um, I mean, Oberlin was a great place for me to realize you know, where my heart lay, whatever. Did you grow up in a musical family? Not particularly. They're music lovers, which I guess is the most important kind of musicianship. A lot of records, you know, my parents were active with the symphony, they, the booster, you know, and they were extremely, you know, attentive to my getting a musical education that they thought I probably wanted or needed. But, um, no, my dad claims the one class he ever failed was guitar. So. <laughs> So they, they probably uh, were quite delighted to find out that uh, their uh, love of music uh, maybe in some small way resulted in an uh, incredibly talented musician. Well, I think, you know, when I sent them the email about the MacArthur, they were finally somewhat impressed. I, I bet they were. They probably told the neighbors right away. Jeremy Dank performs music by Mozart. Schumann and Mel Dow, January 29, 2014 at Penn State Schwab Auditorium. For tickets or information about the piano recital, visit cpa.psu.edu or phone 1-800-ARTS-TIX.